Roadhogs and Renegades, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and it's time to take a look at Action Toys Machine Robo Revenge of Kronos line, the DX line. This is a review sample of DX Bike Robo, the first of Action Toys' current licensed machine robo offerings to break the trend and go big, throwing back to the original line's Big Bike Robo, or GoBots' Super GoBots Psykill, in rendering an all-new tooling of a character released earlier on at a much larger scale and including some stuff. DX Bike Robo is clearly bigger and thicker than the original Action Toys release. He's heavier too, with a hunk of metal somewhere in that big body of his. The face sculpt is also much more sharp and involved, as though the sweet little Bike Robo grew up all Rodimus Prime style. He's got chiseled cheeks and like a, a, a ribbed throat. It makes me think of classic Godaiken style facial aesthetics. It also jostles when I push the hidden button on top of Bike Robo's head. That's weird. It actually pops out, having held itself in there with a combo of a tab, a magnet, and some friction. And that is because in a separate bag of bonus freebies, you get these. These three delicious morsels of Hanna-Barbera. This delightful trio of face sculpts that deliver a slightly modernized, unmistakable visage in calm, sneering, and snarling expressions. Finally, finally. It's Psykill time. You might have noticed the bolder, more saturated color palette, and it plays hugely into making this all work. The proportions are a definite mixture of machine robo and Gobatronian physique, adding a dose of anime flair to the renegade leader, but without losing the core of his original and nostalgia-dripping identity. Like the faces, they aren't screen cap perfect, but they hit a ton of visual keynotes, tying Psykill's cartoony visage into this slightly more toyetic body. By the way, if you want to swap faces in a flash, I find it's easiest to get gravity involved and try to eject the faces down into my palm rather than prying them out or mashing on the button when the figure is standing upright. Anyway, my only qualms with the sculpt come down to the Pandora's box those extra faces opened up. I wish I could fold those handlebars down, and a petty and selfish part of me wishes there were a pair of smaller wheels to swap onto his shoulders for one more GoBots animation callback option. Speaking of options, aside from face swaps, this guy has hand swaps too. You can replace the articulated hands with fully closed cylinders, either for vehicle mode or for an easier time holding onto stuff like his wheels, which can magnet peg in and out of his shoulders to be frisbee tossed at insipid caterwaulers. The third pair of hand options are these big blazing effect parts, replicating the nondescript fist lasers that the GoBots often used in tandem with a somewhat wet looping sound effect. And they're rendered in rather flexible plastic with hard plastic plugs on the bottom. Wiggle wiggle. There was something else in the box, too. It's a single piece of plastic with a screw set in the middle, no articulation, but you can do this. It's kind of wonderful. It makes me feel a sense of calm and hope, but I also wish it had two more arms and maybe a couple more screws in it so I could just stick every single little extra piece onto it. Smug Mr. Bike has a left-right swivel at his neck. It goes that far and that far, and that is it for head articulation. INCORRECT! So I was messing with this guy after the fact, and uh, I kind of unstuck his neck a little bit, and I discovered he's actually got a ball socket connection, I'm pretty sure, because I can get a little bit of tilt here and there with this kind of like loose neck platey thing dangling around. He still can't look up in any way that's appreciable for the bike mode. Uh, he can barely look down. He's still functionally 99% of the time just looking left and right, but there is just that little bit of play. So uh, be aware. Of that! His shoulders can go forwards and backwards. Woo! His outward shoulder motion is a separate hinge, and his tire doesn't hit his head until he's doing a T pose. He has a bicep swivel uh, at his bicep, where it should be, and the bicep swivel was super friggin' tight out of the box. So, what I did is I undid that screw, then twisted this until the two halves of the bicep came apart. Nothing springs out anywhere, and I put some shock oil on the mushroom peg and that made this real delightful. You should get some shock oil. There are two elbow joints, and they allow for a full double-jointed curl. There is a wrist joint, which lets his wrist joint. And then on the articulated hands, you've got... Uh, this, is as, this is as tightly as they can close, FYI. And then the index finger can go up there, the rest of the quote-unquote fingers can go up there, the thumb can go out to here. It's pretty darn expressive, considering that this is trying to mimic, like, the Hanna-Barbera GoBot hand. And, uh, I'm, I'm real happy to see that in actual plastic. Also worth noting, these shoulder wheels, like, they can spin. 
and they don't come off very easily because they're magnetized in. And that's a great change from the little bike robo whose shoulder wheels would kind of eject all the time. The waist can happily swivel. The ab can crunch, and oh, can it crunch! It crunches till his pelvis hits. His pelvis is here. It crunches till his pecs hit his pelvis, and that ain't bad. The hips can kick forwards and backwards. The uh, butt skirt thing here can get out of the way uh, to a comfortable position. And the front skirts up here can lift up so you can kick super high. And then uh, outward hip motion. Now this is another slightly scary bit in tandem with the thigh swivels. The thighs, the thighs can swivel. And this is another joint where I added, I opened this up, took off these two top screws, and then twisted this until that came open and I put some shock oil on the disc in there because this one actually I didn't do it, but this one I did because this one was super sticky tight compared to this one. and. Uh, I didn't want anything to be overly grippy sticky because of the nature of the pin disc swivels. I didn't want to potentially cause any stressing. And uh, you'll also see why, because there's an outward uh, click here. That many clicks to get into the splits. It's super solid. In fact, it's so solid that I would not recommend grabbing here to move that. Like, look at this. I am scared about how that might affect that. So if you're moving the hips, Always have your pressure happening around the hip itself. I thought about maybe putting some shock oil into the gear here, but then I figured that would do more harm than good. So uh, for now, it's it's fine, and uh, it, hold, it holds real darn tight. It's just it's just tight enough that you'll want to not like grab this and ragdoll it around. Also, this is his base click. The next click out is here. And it's like just fine. It's right on the cusp. If it went out any farther on the next click, I would have been kind of bummed out. But I'm okay with this. The knees are also kind of clickety. And they can uh, curl up way past 90 degrees. That's delightful. Thank the transformation. Uh, and then down here, uh, them ankles, they can, uh, if you, you can move this part of the bell bottoms out of the way if you want. And then they can tilt. They can uh, tilt forwards a bit as well on a separate joint. And then, uh, partly thanks to the transformation, they can just go left to right sideways. Uh, there's a note in uh, the box. You might have noticed this angular cut here on the thigh. Uh, that is for the transformation. That lets this happen. Uh, that's not a swivel. So it says, like, don't try to twist this. And I, since I've opened this up, I've seen, like, it's nothing, nothing round is in there. So if you twisted it, then something bad might happen. If he's just standing, if he's just looking left and right, everything else about this guy's articulation, I'm really liking. And I like how solid it feels, too. We'll see how as time goes on, uh, how things go. Like I said, you might want to shock oil swivels if they're way tight, especially, like, up here. This one I shock oiled because, spoiler for the transformation, that's a, that's a tiny little red clip, right, that, that tabs into that slot. And, like, that's the main shoulder connection. And then when this thing was super tight, I felt like I was ripping on that little red tab. So uh, be aware of that red tab. Be aware that you will want to move the hips up here at the hips and not from down here. And then I think everything will be fine. It's not like the toy's made of glass. It's just one of them high-end toys where you might want to wear your adult gloves and leave the kid gloves in the drawer. Surprise! There was one more face option. This is for everybody who ever hated having a face on the bike robo bike mode. I'm also swapping the hands to the closed cylinder options, but you can leave everything as robot mode as you want without affecting the stability of the figure's vehicular form. It just means it looks like there are hands holding the front wheel and there's a face underneath the headlight. With the wheels set aside for a moment, the transformation can truly begin. And man, finally I get to handle a durable, clicky, solid, simple, straightforward, clever modernization of the original Bike Robo conversion scheme. Everything ends up where you'd expect, with a few extra hinges to tweak proportions, and a couple of tabs on each wheel to lock them rock solid without relying on their own spinning axles to do double duty. The legs can get tricky, if only because they can get crowded once you move on to the second one. I highly recommend clicking the hip joints out one or two clicks and swiveling the thighs slightly to give yourself enough room to work, and also enough room to set the rear wheel into place. The leg transformation is lovely, by the way, taking the good ideas from Action Toy's first bike robo and enhancing them with solid linear joints instead of small jiggly ball joints. Bike Robo's bike mode does, yes, still kind of look like a person bending over if you have that image burned into your mind by our pop culture, but man, if it doesn't also do an extra few touches of work to look like the retro space cycle Bike Robo was always meant to be. The slimmer engine goes a long way, as do the solidly locked robot arms. 
Unfortunately, the robot head's inability to do anything but look from side to side really gets in the way of fun GoBots poses in this mode, as leaving a Psykill face installed ends up kinda hard to see, no matter what you do. I do like the range still available in the robot shoulders, as it lets me imagine the bike assuming different aerodynamic or shock suspension stances. Sadly, the laser blast effect parts can't be plugged into the exhaust pipes. And surely I'm not the only person who thought that that might be a thing. But happily, this bike mode ends up at a decent size to use in tandem with the smaller end of 6-inch scale action figures. The handlebars are way thick and probably hard to use properly, but I can stick SH Fig Arts in the seat without it looking terrible, and that puts a smile on my face. A lot of people called the smaller Action Toys Machine Robo figures Masterpiece GoBots, and you could see me doing the air quotes, couldn't you? And that moniker never sat well with me for a number of reasons. They were Revenge of Kronos designs through and through, and way more like Neo Classics Transformers than Masterpiece Transformers in their delivery. DX Bike Robo, though. This is Masterpiece GoBots. The homage is entrenched in nostalgia. The toy feels much more high-end, thick, and ridden with clicky mechanisms and rubberized wheels. His modularity is just begging for some extra add-on packs, like more Psykill faces, smaller Hanna-Barbera Psykill shoulder wheels, or an upscale of Action Toy's original Bike Robo's melee weapon. And will somebody please make me a Rock Lord's Ultra Scepter for this guy? The figure has articulation imperfections and a few scary spots of tightness, not to mention those hopefully long-term durable red shoulder clips and a price that clears the $100 mark, but none of that is powerful enough to loosen the vice-like death grip DX Bike Robo has on my heart. In a world where I am kinda jaded to nostalgia hooks, primarily thanks to Transformers, I think these feelings are fueled by the lingering disbelief that someone paid such uncynical homage to Psykill from the GoBots, a masterpiece-esque non-modernization that isn't conveniently made to also be a Rekgar. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and Action Toys, this is a thing you have going on here. If it can't go on forever, I understand, but a whole lot of us sure would love to see a sequel, and I sure hope that sequel is called DX Porsche Robo.